other reports other than the, what I got already? Just a planning report? Um, That's not bad, yeah. Did you, did, did, did you guys have an engineer report on the review for this? You know, the, the only comment I made on it was the um, requested to uh, have that easement. Uh, okay. So well, yeah, well, we can get the, we'll, we'll address it. We'll cross that bridge. We'll address it. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to the December 18th, 2019 minor subdivision meeting uh, for the city of New Brunswick. Uh, I'll do a roll call, uh, starting from the bottom. Uh, Donna Caputo, not here as alternate. Suzanne Sikora Ludwig. Here. Here. Brian Berger, not here. Uh, Crystal Tella, not here. Principal Planner. Here. Uh, representative of DPW Engineering, Kathleen. Yes. Board Engineer, not here. Board Planner Representative. Here. Ed Grabelny, here. here. Dan Dominguez, here. Dan Burke, a city engineer, here. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been complied with and satisfied, and that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time, place, and conduct of all public meetings of the Minor Subdivision Committee of the City of New Brunswick, has been filed with the City Clerk and placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the city in the lobby of City Hall, 78 Bayard Street, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. All right, so uh, I guess we should start with uh, reports, uh, how we normally do a TAC or minor site plan sure. committee. So, uh, Katie? Should we just read this in there? Oh, uh, yes, please. Okay, so the application is 716 New Brunswick Urban Renewal LLC. It's Block 598, Lot 3.03, Planning Board 2019-09. It's a minor subdivision application to reconfirm a prior minor subdivision approval by the Planning Board pursuant to Resolution Planning Board 2015-02 due to the applicant not having perfected the subdivision by filing a deed of perfection in accordance with NJSA 4055-D-47. And I don't know, do you want to give an you know, opening statement at all, or should I just? Yeah, I report? probably just to kind of put it in perspective. In 2015, uh, we were before the planning board, and we did receive uh, minor subdivision approval to create three lots uh, from the what is the existing lot 3.03, .03. uh, and it was associated with uh, the original site plan application for uh, the utilization of the main part of the site for the distribution, storage and distribution facility, which actually is now up and operating. Um, the, end, the expectation was that uh, all three of these lots would be created and that uh, subsequently the owner applicant would be back uh, for additional approvals for the other two lots for warehouses. Indeed, then we came back and received a site plan approval for what is referred to as lot 304 uh, which is 750, 750. Jersey Avenue. Um, the, the intent, obviously, and we're still in the same process of utilizing those three lots. However, the, the minor subdivision that was approved in 2015, which we're still looking for, was never perfected. Uh, it wasn't perfected for a number of reasons, but um, the, you know, for a minor subdivision, it can be perfected by a deed. And indeed, in fact, the deed was never uh, was never recorded. And there are, there are some several reasons for it. The primary reason is that there was also environmental remediation that was necessary to be conducted on the site, uh, and there was some concern on the part of the WIC principals that, to the extent that the remediation may impact where those subdivision lines were going to be, there was some hesitation on WIC's part of actually going forward and actually creating those lots and then having to come back and change them. Uh, fast, and again, as you realize, dealing with the DEP, it took some period of time for that to happen. Uh, I believe uh, that Bob Paulus from WIC has provided a letter uh, to, um, uh, to this committee uh, with regard to the, the history of the environmental remediation. Uh, the RAO has now been finalized, uh, was finalized actually I think in November, uh, well actually I'm sorry, in March of 2019. And uh, now that we know that the, there is a finalization of the RAO, WIC feels comfortable in proceeding with 
perfecting of that same subdivision. Now, but knowing that the original approval of that subdivision has expired, um, we <coughs> thought it was appropriate then to come to the minor subdivision committee, since it was a minor subdivision, just to reconfirm the subdivision, which will allow us then to go forward and perfect it by a deed. Uh, I would also point out that as part of the original subdivision approval, uh, there was uh, testimony provided that there was a need for cross-access easements uh, between lot, to be created lot 305, which is that main portion which is now being uh, operated, and proposed lot 306 because proposed lot 306 is landlocked. Uh, as part of that approval, we made a representation and we noted on the subdivision plan which was distributed to everyone uh, that those cross access easements, uh, which will serve as both 306 and 305, are identified on that plan. And the intent is to carry those easements forward. <coughs> and what I'm making a recommendation, because it was a question of how we're going to do that, um, assuming that the, this committee were, were to reapprove the subdivision, we would then create the subdivision deed, which creates the three lots and create those easements in that deed itself so that rather than create a se separate easement document, the appropriate way to do that would be to create them as you're creating the lots. So we would then be proposing to you that we would create the subdivision deed and we would identify those cross access easements for 305 and 306 in the deed itself. And we'll provide meets and bounds descriptions and before we would ask to have the um, the planning board signed off on it, give you the meets and bounds, have the engineers have an opportunity to look at them, just confirm them based upon the plan. And that's the, the sum of the entire application, essentially. Okay. Let's dive into the planning report. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just quickly go through the description and, um, and our comments. Um, so the site is 30 acres and it contains a one-story industrial building. Um, in 2014, site plan approval was granted to use the facility for the packaging, warehousing, and distribution of calcium chloride ice melter, um, and it operates year-round. Um, and I guess I can skip over the proposed development part because I think you've got that, right. that covered. But um, at this time, the applicant is seeking reconfirmation of the minor subdivision that was previously approved. Um, let's see, oh, so um, according to resolution um, PB 2015-02, um, proposed lot 3.01 was granted a variance for lot width. Um, 200 feet were required where 164 feet were provided. Um, for side yard setback for accessory structure, 20 feet required where 18.4 feet were provided. Um, as well as height for accessory structure, maximum 15 feet or 35 feet is provided, which was a pre-existing non-conforming condition. Uh, for proposed lot 3.05, there was a side yard setback for accessory structure, 20 feet required, 16.64 feet provided. Um, proposed lot 3.06, um, the lot width of 200 feet was required where 170 feet provided. And frontage on a roadway uh, required where none was provided. Um, and the bulk table also indicated that a variance was previously granted to permit a maximum building height of 95 feet on proposed lot 3.05, where a maximum of 35 feet is permitted. And if I might uh, just interject, mm -hmm. all of that is still exactly the same. Nothing has changed. It's the exact same subdivision. Uh, those variances that were granted are still valid variances. Right. And to just throw in, were reaffirmed in the uh, when the site plan was approved uh, earlier this year for right. the project. Um, as far as the easement review goes, um, it mentions there are two railroad track siding easements for Block 598, Lot 6.01, um, a street tree easement along Jersey Avenue, a sanitary sewer easement along Jersey Avenue in the northwestern portion, and then the two ac access easements that you had uh, noted on Lots 2.05 and 2.06. Um, <coughs> So our only comments were that the applicant should confirm that no changes are proposed to the previously approved minor subdivision at this time, which is there are none. And then um, the applicant shall comply with the conditions of approval set forth in resolution PB 2015-02 dated August 11, 2015. And that's, uh, that's not a problem. 
and then um, just the standard ones to help pay all fees owed by the City of New Brunswick and submit all copies of approvals or exemptions from outside agencies. And that was it on our planning end. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anyone else have any engineering comments? comments. Cover the request for the uh, filed easement. It could be in the deed. Yes. It satisfies you. So no, I think my concerns. Okay. Uh, I guess it's not entirely applicable, but I'll throw it out there. Construction? No, I had no comments if I <coughs> reviewed the uh, original site plan and the uh, current one, and they're the same. Suzanne, anything? <coughs> no, I have no comment. Arvind, attorney? Uh, we're not doing this as a as an extension of time. No, it's a new minor subdivision. Minor subdivision. Okay. Um, then the minor site plan committee has jurisdiction to grant the approval of the minor site plan. The caveat, subdivision. obviously. Subdivision. I'm sorry, subdivision. Uh, the caveat being that all conditions of the prior approvals would still apply. Yeah. That's it? That's it. Okay. Um, then I guess... I, I think we I think we do I think we do so I will open it to uh, to the public for comment. Mr. Craddeville. Good morning, uh, mm -hmm. members of the committee. Charles Craddeville, New Brunswick. I'm going to do this little squaring and thing just to keep it normal. So uh, state your name, spell your last name. Charles Craddeville, K R A T O V I L. Mm -hmm. You swear from tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Go for it. Just a couple questions. Wanted to ask about the remediation. What uh, types of contaminants, if there were any, uh, and what's the status on the, the cleanup? Uh, primarily lead, because it was the old AC Delco battery plant. Um, there's, there's been an LSRP assigned for years, and they've been, uh, they issued an REO in March 1st. Do I have to swear them in? March okay. 1st. I'm going to have to swear okay, you in, sure. so sorry. Uh, yep. Say your name, spell your last name. Uh, Tim Paulus, P-A-U-L-U-S. You swear from to the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. You want to incorporate what you just said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And say that it was, in fact, under oath and it's approved, correct? Yes. All right. Thank you, attorney. And that, that, that's basically so it. So I, I didn't catch the, the end result of the, the right. cleanup. An, an RAO was issued uh, March 1st of, of 2019. Okay, which means it's been completed. The cleanup, right. For all properties on the site. For, for the right for the subject property and all the other issues. For sub for 760 now we're going to be subdividing it, correct? Right for the entirety of the, the, the site. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Seeing no more public comments, uh, does anybody have a motion to approve the? Uh, the minor subdivision? Motion to approve. Second? No, I'm not saying second. I'm just I'll just second. Okay. Suzanne Sikora Ludwig? Yes. Katie Puniello? Yep. Kathleen Marcelli? Yes. Todd Bletcher? Yes. Edward Belny? Yes. Dan Dominguez? Yes. Dan Burke? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you very much for everybody for your patience, understanding, and convenience.